Hi, brothers and sisters, it's Pastor Tim. Ephesians 2, 6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The nanosecond you believe on the Son of God, that he always existed. He's eternal. He's always existed. God the Son left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, shed his precious blood, having never sinned, shed his precious blood to pay the sin debt for us, died, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. The nanosecond you believe on him, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1.13 and 14 and Ephesians 4.30. Romans 10.9 and 10 says, If we confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. For with the heart man believes and is justified, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Ephesians 2.8.9 For by grace... For by grace have you been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. We have been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, I want to talk for a minute about what Jesus cried out on the cross, to tell us die. It is finished. The debt was paid for completely, paid in full. The job was done perfectly. No more sacrifice. The penalty for our sins was paid for then. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There are many who are teaching that it's faith plus something else. It's faith like the early church. Faith plus circumcision. Paul addressed that. No, what you're doing, anything you add to it is prideful. It's pointing to me. It's, okay, well, I believe what Christ did, but I also have to do something. Now, look at me. I'm not like the rest of them. I'm not like those who, you know those unholy, ungodly people. They, they clearly stop that. The nanosecond you believe, you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. If you add, say, I, I must believe on his redemptive work on the cross of Calvary for the remission of all my sins, plus I must be water baptized. Eh, wrong answer. Not right. I must be water baptized and speak in tongues. Eh, wrong answer. The nanosecond you believe, you are saved and sealed until the day of redemption. Now let's try to bring this home with a legal term called double jeopardy, at least in the United States and I believe in other countries. So I'm going to give an example I've given I've given in the past. Sorry, given the past. Given in the past, I have two associate pastors, and so I'm going to use Pastor Greg McLean. He's also his son married my daughter, and we have two adorable grandchildren, Peter and Zeke, from that union. Praise God, and love them all. We are blessed. So we're we're a big family. Say I use this example. Say Pastor Greg, he's tired. He's tired of dealing with people's nonsense, and he's tired of the hateful heretics and the Pharisees and the legalists. I'm just going to use that as an example. And he says, but I'm also mad at Tim. Tim, whatever, for whatever reason, I got him so mad, so angry that he labored in that. By the way, he's a saved man. He doesn't lose his salvation with any of this, just so you know. But while judicially sin can't be attributed to our account, if I go out and rob the bank and I go to jail, that's a negative consequence but I'm still saved. I don't want to. I'm just using that as an example. People will spin that, but oh well, whatever. So it's easy to get my DNA. I get really excited and worked up and we call the first row the spit zone. If that's TMI, sorry about that. Uh, not really, but you, you get the point. Um, so it would be easy to get my DNA. And he says to his wife, Jackie, he says, you know what? We're going to retire but we're going to retire with millions. We're going to take out an insurance policy on me, and then we're going to frame my murder and put it on Tim, and that'll teach him. We're going to get back at him. And so they conspire to do that. And he frames his own murder. She gets all the money. They go off to the Caribbean. I'm 
charged, I'm indicted, I'm convicted, and I go to prison. Well, while at prison, I do a good job cleaning the toilets and, you know, serving the food and doing the laundry and making license plates. And they say, you know, he... He's really, we think he's rehabilitated. He's done a good job. We're going to let him off early, and they let me out. I, I get released early. I have already been charged. I've been found guilty, and I've paid the debt, the penalty for my crime. I find out where Greg and Jackie are, because I know they're alive. I know I didn't kill them. They're floating around on inner tubes by the ocean in a nice pool, you know, the sipping drinks with the umbrellas in them and just living life to its fullest. I go to the Caribbean. I find out where they are. I take a gun and I shoot Greg dead right there on the spot. There could be hundreds or thousands of people around. Do you realize because I've already been convicted and paid the penalty for that crime in this country, that would be, I cannot be convicted or charged again. I cannot go back to prison. I cannot. I've already. Why? Because I've already been charged and paid the debt, gone to prison for the crime. I paid the penalty in full for, the, for that crime. The fact that it was a lie is irrelevant because in the court system, there is no double jeopardy. I can't be tried again when, it, when it's already been done. It, likewise, if I had been tried and I was found innocent, once you're tried, I can't, I can't be tried again. And so I could literally kill him and not be tried. Well, in the courtroom of heaven, the enemy, Hasatan himself, can accuse all he wants. But when I have trusted in and rested in his grace, when I've been saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security, because Jesus, Jesus paid the debt in full, our Sin was imputed to him, his righteousness imputed to us. Sin can no longer be held against my account. Jesus paid it all. There is no double jeopardy in heaven. When people try to say, but if you sin after you've been saved and you don't repent, if you've sinned, listen, I've preached a sermon on 1 John chapter 1. When I know that I've done something, I confess it. But that doesn't save me and keep me saved. That's about my fellowship, not about my salvation. And my spiritual growth is by trusting in and resting in him. It's not by works that I do. It's as Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are created in his workmanship unto good works, which he prepared or preordained beforehand. God has a, a destiny for each of us as I abide in him, as I rest in him, in his amazing grace, I become more Christ-like. I can take no glory for it. I've done none of it. I couldn't save myself, can't keep myself saved. There's nothing to do. It's done. Jesus did it all. And as I abide in him, you know, when God, it's all him. It's all work of Holy Spirit. We can't even take credit for it. We're just abiding in him. And what's the will and works of God? Check out John 6, 28, 29, and John 6, 40. To believe on the one God sent, to believe on the Son of God. There it is. The Bible self defines, defines itself. Think of it this way. People say, I had someone, I had a couple Pharisees, religious leaders, railing at me today. And they were like, well, what about our church does this and we do this and you don't think that's good? Well, yeah, I think they're good things. But you know what? I know atheists who do those very same things. <gasps> How dare you compare us to atheists? Now, what I'm saying is there are atheists who do the very same works that you just said. The works that he's talking about are abiding in and resting in his grace. And, be, and Holy Spirit does that work. He does that work. As we have spiritual growth, that has nothing to do with my salvation. And it, let's be honest, there are people, who, unsaved people, do good things, right? As far as those works that people are talking about. It's not what the Bible's talking about. When people talk about loving God, how, how does God reckon us as loving him? He sees us in Christ, in union with Christ. God is love. Check out 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Who could meet God's standard? His His perfect standard of love, of agape love, in and of ourselves. It's as we are in Christ and we become more like him. I, I hope that helps. Those of you, I hope the double jeopardy helps. There are a lot of people getting really bound up. People backdoor works. It is a lie. It is a heresy. In fact, the gospel is 1 Corinthians 
15, 1 to 4. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. That's the gospel. The apostle Paul said in Galatians 1, 8, 9, if anyone, anyone brings you a gospel other than that we've delivered, even an angel from heaven, that person is accursed. There's a lot of accursed people out there. They're teaching a false gospel. They're teaching faith plus other things. Faith plus works. Faith plus water baptism. Faith plus circumcision. Faith plus obedience to the law. Faith plus. Faith plus. They're backdooring. It actually, they're not back. They're out and out declaring works for salvation. That is heretical. That is heresy. It is a false gospel, and it is a that person. That that person is to be accursed. It's it's antichrist. And in fact, those false gospels are the doctrines of demons. There are over 200 verses in the New Testament about being saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, when you think it's anything else, you are diminishing. You know, it's pride that causes people to do that. That's why we want to stay humble. When you recognize, when you admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior and believe on the Son of God and His finished redemptive work on the cross of Calvary for the remission of all your sins, you are saved, sealed, and sanctified. You're 100% justified in perfect position that nanosecond you believed to a holy God because of the meritorious work of Christ. Nothing we could do. We're not saved by works. We're not kept saved by works. We are saved for works, which he preordained, pre prepared beforehand. I'll tell you what, I am so thankful that when God sees me, he sees me seated in Christ. And look at this, he already sees us as glorified. I hope that helps those of you who are getting confused or have been confused. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone period. Remember, he loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. God bless you and have an awesome rest of your day. Shalom.